got another series of past paper walkthrough videos so this playlist's all to do with bonding and structure so obviously this is the first one and the sort of top tip here is just be careful with your wording so you've got to be really careful you know what kind of particles you're talking about so are you talking about atoms ions molecules are you talking about bonds or are you talking about intermolecular forces so as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first so make a start so the definition for ionic bonding is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions moving on to the dot and cross diagram now for potassium sulfide so we need two potassium ions so I've gone for crosses to represent the electrons for the potassium so I've got a full outer shell you can have an empty shell there if you want but I tend to do that so two of those one plus charge each or if you wanted to you could draw two separate ions moving on to the sulfide ion so sulfur's in group six so we need six valence electrons so because I've gone for crosses for the potassium I'm going for these open circles they just need to be a different symbol to the cross so six of those and two crosses because each of these potassiums has basically given an electron to the sulfur to turn it into this two minus ion moving on to the bonding in sf2 now so we've got this dot and cross diagram here sulfur's in group six so we need six of one type of electron put one in the sort of shared part fluorine's in group seven so seven valence electrons and draw them with a different symbol Moving on to part C now, so we've got to talk about bonding and structure to explain these different physical states of potassium sulfide and sulfur difluoride. So first thing we can say is potassium sulfide has a giant ionic lattice structure. So why is it a solid? It's because a large amount of energy is needed to break the strong attractions between the oppositely charged ions. So moving on to SF2 now, so why is this a gas at RTP? Well, this has got a simple covalent structure, or you could say simple molecular structure. So only a small amount of energy is needed to break the weak intermolecular forces between the SF2 molecules. So to help with part D, I've drawn up the SF6 molecule you haven't been asked to do that, but it's obviously going to help me explain this. So what's that shape called? It's octahedral. So yeah, you've got six bonds, but there's eight faces. And that's where that oct comes in the name. So octahedral shape. And all these F, S, F bond angles are all 90 degrees, all right angles. And finally, suggest why SF6 is unreactive. Well, there's a couple of things you can talk about here. You could talk about the bonds, so these are very, very strong. So high bond enthalpy for the SF bond. Or you could talk about the fact that the SF6 molecule is non-polar. 